We're going to the doctors. Just got home, it is 20 past one. 20 past one, I have hiccups. So I also had some tests today for Lyme disease. To see if I have got it, I'm pretty sure I have. I got a tick bite four weeks ago. I didn't know about it for like two days because it was on my ribs. And then I found it and then sort of panicked and just tried to get it out. Didn't get the whole tick out, so it left the head or the something in there. And then two days later, I managed to get all of it out. And then it was a few days after that that I started to get this rash. I had no idea what Lyme disease was. I had no idea what a tick bite could do. I sort of knew that ticks are bad and you had to get the whole body out. I never knew why and I never knew like the effects on from there. Anyway, so I had this rash and it was really hot and itchy. I do have a water ionizer machine which produces so many different types of pH water and one of the pHs that it creates is 11.5. I can't remember the scientific name of it right now. But the 11.5 water that it creates works as like an anti-inflammatory spray so I would just put it in like a little spray bottle. Like something like this and I would just spray it directly onto the bite and that really helped reduce the bite. It eventually completely disappeared a little bit more on this machine. So here it is, I've already showed you. It's really cool, it has so many different uses. I will probably create a whole like separate video showing about it at some point. Um, but it's also one of the ways that Matt and I make money as we distribute the machines. More on that at some other point, I just thought it'd be cool to let you guys know. And then I think it was, I don't know, maybe two weeks later, I noticed that like I was starting to get really itchy again and my rash was coming back but it was much 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 bigger like it was a very light coloured rash but it was spreading all over my body and like spreading it's completely gone now because of the antibiotics but it was spreading up my chest it was spreading like on my back and spreading up my neck and then spreading onto my face like I had a bit of the rash here and the symptoms that you get with Lyme disease are like extreme fatigue and muscle soreness and muscle aches there's a wasp oh no there's a big wasp in here I'm gonna just slowly walk away it looks massive oh it's got my painting okay it's gone Whew. for me it felt like I'd done a really big workout my muscles just ached my muscles were just really sore and especially in my neck like moving my head moving my neck it was just so sore and as the days went on it was just getting worse and I just felt like I couldn't move I just had no energy. I went to the doctors and I got a blood test taken and the doctor could see the rash and she just knew that there was a infection there. Like they can't say then and there that it is Lyme disease. They have to wait for the blood test to confirm it. But she just put me on antibiotics straight away because she could see that there was some sort of infection going on in my body. I've been on those for six days today and I feel so much better. The first like two days of being on antibiotics were really horrible. I feel like because the antibiotics were in my system and were fighting like the Lyme disease that's in my system, it was all just like coming up and coming out. It was horrible. I just felt like I had flu. I actually felt like I had COVID. It was really horrible, but I'm so much better. So anyway, I'm waiting for my blood results. I think I'll get them back either today or tomorrow. And then I'll know the steps like on from there, whether I get more antibiotic treatment. I thought it was kind of interesting. I'd never heard about Lyme disease before. I didn't know that you could get Lyme disease from ticks in the UK, but now I do. And here I am, <laughs> this is my experience. So I kind of wanted to share it because I'm sure lots of people like know that ticks are bad, but maybe the same as me, like don't know why they're bad. I'll update you as I keep healing from it. And yeah, as time goes on. <laughs> So that's why last week's video was so short. I was really struggling and just didn't have the energy. Matt was just taking care of me and taking care of Nyla. I will say if you get a tick bite, don't panic. If you have someone there, go and get them to help you get it out properly. You could even get like these little tweezer looking things that help get the whole body out. I'm pretty sure you can only get Lyme disease from ticks. Well, one, not all ticks carry disease. But two, you can only get the disease if part of the tick stays in you and only then will it be passed into your bloodstream. Enough talk about ticks and Lyme disease and all of that stuff. Let's get back to this week's video. And I'm about to prepare our pizza base for dinner.
crazy over it. Hello. So we're currently trying to have a sort out of all of our things. And Matt is just over here having a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> One of the biggest problems with living on such a small boat is that we just don't have space for anything, anywhere. So we're just trying to figure out where to put everything. I don't know how well you can see, but I'm pretty sure that that is one of our blankets in the canal. I think Matt's got it. Boat life isn't always peaceful and easy. Quite often it's challenging and stressful but it sort of balances out because you have this as your garden. Also I'm just noticing whilst talking how like awful this paint job is. It was like this when we got the boat so. One of our next intentions is to buy lots of paint and redo the paint inside the whole boat. Just probably the same colour but just to freshen it up because as you can see it's just really patchy and like doesn't look good so that's on the to-do list you little boogie little boogie 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 So this morning as we were sorting and trying to organise all of our things we managed to get together two big bags of stuff for charity which is mostly like Nyla's clothes and my clothes that I don't want so I'm just heading into the little village to drop those things off literally just got to the park and it started raining. <laughs> Are you just chilling in there? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Meanwhile, Matt was busy at home cleaning the floor with these old socks. Did a pretty good job actually. <laughs> So instead of throwing away your old fluffy socks, throw them into the cleaning cupboard and clean the floor with ease. Are you kissing me? Matt's been busy tidying up in here and it looks amazing. And who have we got in here? There's even a little cat bed. Can you put all of these on the fridge? crazy windy today. It's a little bit scary because we're just surrounded by trees.
I mean, what have you got? <laughs> sick. Seven o'clock, we're just having our dinner. We're having spaghetti bolognese because we got bored of pizza or tired of pizza. But we are still having a Lola. Lola, hasn't got the concept that they're meant for the fridge yet. Um, we're still using the dough for something, so Matt's busy making a garlic bread, which I'm so excited about. So because it's near impossible to get close to the bank to actually moor up, this is like how far away we are from the boat. <laughs> Matt's got all of these planks <laughs> and is making a step <laughs> in the mud. This is how he's doing it. I'm just taking Nyla for a little walk to a park nearby us. Well, it's actually not as close as I thought it was. And it started to rain, so right now I'm just finding some shelter. We've got delivery being delivered to a pub close to us, and Matt's staying at the boat to wait for the delivery to turn up so that he can go and get it. We've ordered 16 kilograms of bread flour.
It is absolutely hammering it down outside. It is six o'clock. So we've decided that we're gonna make some sourdough bread. We made a loaf last night, or Matt made a loaf last night, and it was so good. He's nearly eaten it all, or we've nearly eaten it all. So we're gonna make some more. For this recipe, we're using 250 grams of active sourdough starter. Now, once you start making your own bread and get used to working with sourdough, you can sort of change the recipe depending on how you want it. This recipe uses 300 to 320 grams of water and you just add that into the starter and mix it up until it's all combined or looks like it's all combined. You'll want 500 grams of bread flour. I'm just weighing it out on a different bowl here because it's easier to sieve it in that way. So here I'm adding the flour gradually. I'll take a little break from using the sieve and then mix it all up with the spatula. It just helps the mixture combine a little bit easier and a little bit better. But that's also because our bowl is quite small for this recipe that we're using. So definitely get yourself a bigger bowl than we have. So now all the flour is added. I'm mixing it very gently, but that's because of the size of our bowl. You don't have to be that gentle with it. But you do want to take your time making sure that the wet ingredients are nicely mixed with the dry ingredients, the flour. So you want to keep on sort of folding it into itself until it just about holds its own shape. So it sort of looks like that. And then you can start to knead it with the spatula or spoon or whatever you're using. So you just keep folding it into itself until it forms a dough where it can hold its own shape and becomes a bit more firm. It takes up to around seven minutes. And then once you've done that, you can flour a piece of cloth or a muslin or a tea towel or something like that. And then you'll put that over the top of your bowl and leave it to sit for about half an hour. So the next stage of making your sourdough loaf is adding the salt. And the salt really adds so much flavor to the dough. So you definitely want to make sure you remember to add it because it's quite easy to forget. So here I'm using two teaspoons of salt and then I'm just mixing it in with a spatula before I use my hands. So now with floured hands, you want to stretch the dough and you sort of grab a corner of the dough and pull it up and give it a little wiggle and then flop it in onto itself. This adds air into the dough. You want to do this at least eight times, but it's quite a therapeutic activity. So you'll probably find that you sort of get carried away with doing it and do it far more than eight times, which I'm pretty sure is fine. Our bread's always turned out fine when we've done it for more than eight times. So keep doing that until you feel satisfied with it. You'll sort of know when your dough is happy to have you stop. So now I'm just flouring the sides of the bowl to help the dough rise and to help it not stick so much. And then you'll want to cover it with a cloth and leave it for at least eight hours or leave it overnight. Morning. An hour before you bake the dough, you're going to want to put it in a proving basket to find its shape. So right now I'm just flouring the proving basket. Now I'm trying to keep the dough all intact and together. I'm using a spatula to scrape down the side of the bowl to keep it all together and not break it up. But as our bowl was too small, you can see that the dough found its way out of the bowl. So I'm just trying to get it all back in without actually tearing the dough. So now the dough is no longer sticking to the bowl and it's holding itself together. I'm just gonna pop it in the proving basket and leave it in there for an hour. So now I'm preparing our bread tin. I'm just flouring it so that it doesn't stick. And it's been about an hour, so I'm putting the dough into the bread tin. It gets a little bit stuck to the muslin, so I found that spraying it with water sort of helps it come away. And now I'm gonna put it in the oven without the lid on for about seven minutes. And here I am scoring it after the seven minutes. Now I'm spraying it with water and I'll put it back in the oven for 25 minutes on gas mark seven. Bunny. 
ka nahi. So now it's been about 25 minutes, so we're going to take the lid off and then put it back in the oven for 20 more minutes without the lid on. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and we've got the bread out and it looks amazing. We're very happy with how this has turned out. We got it out of the bread tin. Here we're just dusting off the flour that's on the bottom. So now we're just putting it on this cooling rack so that it can cool down so it doesn't steam too much inside. But we're really happy with how this loaf turned out. As you can see here, it springs right back into its shape, which is really good. It shows that the dough and the bread is super happy. So yeah, this recipe is super easy to follow and you can change and adapt it depending on what you like. What do you think, baby? Nice. Nice, nice, Tastes like rice so definitely give it a go and let us know how your bread turns out. I will say that one of the secret ingredients is making sure that you have really good strong bread flour and also a very happy sourdough starter. There are also a bunch of other techniques and stuff that we don't even necessarily know but making sure that you have good strong bread flour is a really good place to start. Thanks for watching this week's video. We hope that you enjoyed it and a huge, huge thank you to everyone who bought us a coffee this week. It makes such a difference and we're so grateful for you. If you're new here, then remember to like and subscribe and go and watch our other videos if you haven't already. And if you're up to date, then we'll see you in the next one. Bye.